Hello, I'm Murray Walker. Welcome to Murray's Motorsport Madness. I've gathered together some of the most exciting, spectacular and jaw-dropping clips from the high-octane world of motorsport. In the next hour, you'll see more crashes than the US stock market, more daring driving than rush hour on the M4, and more death-defying action-packed adrenaline fueled stunts than a Hollywood blockbuster. Seatbelts on, start your engines. This is Murray's Motorsport Madness. <laughs> The exhilarating world of Formula One features the fastest, most technologically advanced cars known to man. But it's not just what happens on the track that gets the crowds excited. There's also the pit girls. But that's for another time and another video. To really get the attention of the fans and the sponsors, you need amazing stunts. Back in 2003, the Honda Formula One team wanted to find out what was the fastest over a mile. An 800 horsepower Formula One car, a state-of-the-art power bike, or a 150 mile an hour racing power boat. Who won? Well, let's take a look at that and some other incredible PR stunts. Persuading the owners of London City Airport to lend you their runway for the day is the kind of favour only a Formula One team can get. Running alongside the Thames in the heart of London, the airport must be one of the only places in the world where a boat would be able to race alongside Formula One ace Jensen Button and British superbike rider Michael Rutter. Captaining the Formula Four stroke boat is King of the Waves Steve Curtis. Gathering this collection of high-speed machines in the same place has taken two years of planning. So it's no surprise the racers are keen to have a look at each other's kit, sizing up the competition and comparing notes. After detailed preparations and safety checks, the car, boat and bike are ready for the first race. While the car and power bike rev their engines and ready themselves to hit the throttle, the power boat is given a head start to compensate for the added drag of bouncing across the waves. As the boat reaches the start line, the flag is down and the duo on track surge away from the line. While the boat enjoys an early lead, before long the car and bike are streaking past it, with Jensen surging into a commanding lead to record a time of 11 seconds, two seconds faster than Mike Rutter's motorcycle. After some tweaking with the Honda's expert engineers, Button is ready for the final run. The drag is waved, and while the bike remains nearly level in the first few moments, it's struggling to maintain enough grip, with huge power surging through its narrow tyres. For a few tantalising seconds, they're neck and neck, before the enormous power of the V10 engine in the Formula One car propels it into the lead. With those advanced aerodynamics, he's absolutely flying there. But if he carefully breaks in time, or he'll need his swimming trunks. That's an incredible run. Jensen hitting a top speed of just over 180 miles an hour and reaching the quarter mile in an incredible nine seconds. So the lesson is, while the boat and bike may look fantastic, if you want to be the fastest at London City Airport, sitting behind the wheel of a Honda Formula One car is the only place to be. Nestled amidst stunning alpine scenery, St. Moritz is best known for the millionaire lifestyle of its exclusive visitors. But for the BMW Sauber Formula One team, it's the ideal venue for a headline-grabbing stunt that's unlikely to be repeated anytime soon. Each year, the white turf horse race sees some of the world's finest horses swap the green grass of the race course for the freezing snow of the Alps. Last year, however, it was horsepower of a very different kind that was drawing the crowds. In a world first, Formula One ace Nick Heidfeld took his V8 engine 220 mile an hour racing car away from its usual track and onto the treacherous ice of St. Moritz Frozen Lake. <laughs> 
With such huge power available, with just a tiny flex of his foot, Heidfeld had to trade very carefully. Too much throttle, and he'd be sliding off the course in a matter of seconds. But with all the skill and panache you'd expect from one of the world's fastest drivers, he kept the car balanced, just on the edge of control, delighting the crowds with a virtuoso display of overstep. Topped off with a snow-spraying, stomach-churning series of spins. Formula One in the Alps. Now, there's something you don't see every day. With multi-million pound investments, highly trained pit crews and world-class drivers, you'd think that nothing is left to chance. But you'd be wrong. And if you thought that with the car's top quality electronics, aerodynamics, suspension and tyres, that nothing could go wrong, well, you'd be wrong about that too. We're all used to seeing the odd bit of wildlife when we're out for a nice drive in the country, but these guys would never have guessed there'd be so much animal action involved in their dramatic dash for the finish. Beaks may fly, but they certainly won't get out of your way in a hurry. While this selection of nature's finest should probably learn to look before crossing. This horse rider seems to have taken a wrong turn, but at least he decides to pull over and let the car pass. Which is more than could be said for these cows. Losing parts of your car in the heat of the moment can happen to any racer. But as these drivers show, true determination is carrying on heroically as if nothing has happened. Then we lost uh, the tires, the wheels, uh, everything. <laughs> it's always best to have a look at a map of the circuit before you start out. This driver gets there in the end. While his fellow racer decides to go round the long way. But you really realise you've got it wrong when you take a corner and someone else is coming the other way. And when you've got yourself into a spin, working out which way you were going in the first place is the toughest job on the track. Rally Sweden is a tough, gruelling event, but this streaker is really testing his bodywork to the limit. Now, usually, race winners head straight for the podium when they've won a race, but MotoGP ace Valentino Rossi is known for his unusual post-race celebrations. This is him having a quiet moment of reflection following his first ever victory aboard a Yamaha racing bike. But nothing can beat the traditional tyre smoking ceremony. Here's Valentino again, doing what he does best. If you want to see four or five cars all trying to battle for the number one spot, then visit your local supermarket on a Saturday morning. 
Alternatively, add some high-powered engines, a track, and some highly skilled drivers, and then you really do have a race on your hands. As adrenaline and speed are pushed to the limit, it's all too easy for a driver to forget there are other cars in the race. And before you know it, heavy metal is crashing, sliding and spinning in every direction. The annual Macau Grand Prix sees Formula 3 cars battling for the lead on a narrow, winding street circuit. Take a ticket, guys. There's no room for everyone. When it comes to truck racing, being twice the size means there's half the room on the track. Breathe in, gentlemen. Motorcyclists have a whole new set of problems, but one thing's for sure. Being in the thick of the action isn't always the best place to be, and probably means you're not going to make it to work on time. So, the best advice in these situations? If there isn't enough room on the track, try going off-road. But look out for those barriers. Whoops! There's only ever one perfect line through a corner. The problem is that's where everyone wants to be. Get in line, lads. The start of the race and everyone is jockeying for position. But with only a limited amount of space available, it only takes one driver to lose control and in seconds, they're synchronized spinning. Now, you couldn't do that again if you tried. Motor racing is generally a non-contact sport. Sadly, no one seems to have told this lot. Taking an unusual line through the corners can sometimes be an innovative, brave bid to gain a place. I said sometimes. Drivers don't generally sign up for this job to sit nose to tail in traffic. Patience isn't a word in their vocabulary. So when caught in a jam, it's liable to get a bit sticky. In the heat of the moment, always resort to the blame game. But remember, violence never solved anything. Rallying all day at high speeds on demanding road surfaces can take its toll. So whatever you do, don't block the way home. Hello. When conditions are tough, the chances are you won't be the only one.
certain corners can test the mettle of even the most accomplished racer. But there's something about this one that'll send them all round the bend. I wonder who'll be picking up the bill for the damage to this smart entranceway. Times MotoGP world champion Valentino Rossi is famed for his aggressive and determined riding style. This clip shows you just how far he'll go to avoid being overtaken. That's an enormously brave move that just turns out okay. And that's just unbelievable. Having spent 60 years in the business, I thought I'd seen everything. But even I was surprised at what you can do if you've got enough skill, speed and creativity and complete and utter disregard for your own personal safety. Take a look at this crazy bunch. Aero GP is a new series that's taking international motorsport by storm. Some of the world's most highly skilled pilots circumnavigate the globe, wowing the crowds while showing off an array of dizzying tricks in a variety of death-defying disciplines. Navigating a tight, twisty course alongside their fellow racers, these guys have to use every ounce of their ability to stay in the air and out of trouble. Low-level flying is a demanding pastime, but when you're skimming the waves at 300 miles an hour, you can't be wet behind the ears. But have a look at this. In a bid to win maximum points, this pilot is flying upside down at a mere 15 feet above the ground. Now that's just incredible. For higher altitude action, check out these stomach-churning aerobatic maneuvers where the G-forces are enough to knock you out in an instant. And if that's not enough, the pilots also have to chase each other in a dogfight contest, outflying their competition by pulling incredibly tight turns and rolls. But the ultimate test of timing and airborne agility comes on the bombing runs, where the planes drop real bombs on dummy targets. The pilot releases his load, and that's a direct hit. Back on Earth, meanwhile, the hardy people of Iceland have developed a sport that also requires a head for heights. Formula One off-road. Using supercharged V8-engined off-road vehicles, these drivers attempt to climb a vertigo-inducing 200-foot cliff with nothing but a reinforced steel roll cage to protect them when it all goes wrong. With enough power and a cunning choice of route, the best drivers do manage to reach the top. But when they do, it takes some instant braking to stop this happening. For other competitors, an alternative route up the cliff seems like a good idea. It's all going well for this driver until the laws of physics intervene. made it all the way to the top, getting over the final few feet is all but impossible. The real action comes from the world of drag boat racing. The 
featuring high-powered craft capable of speeds approaching 250 miles an hour. Competitors line up side by side for a sprint race over a quarter mile long section of water. Enormous methanol fueled engines mean they can accelerate to huge speeds in a matter of seconds. It's a spectacular sport for competitors and the crowds, but when things go wrong, it all happens in the blink of an eye. If you're as big a race fan as me, then you'll know that in every race there are some unforgettable moments that sometimes the drivers would really prefer to forget. You can have all the training in the world, but sometimes lady luck just isn't on your side. We all have days where things don't go according to plan. But for this collection of wacky racers, the worst possible outcome awaits. Here's pop star Shane Lynch on the last race of the season. take his debut win, but just when it was all going so well. Ah! So close and yet so far. Now here's a selection of dirt bike riders attempting a very steep hill climb indeed. 
Not everyone can be a champion, but this lot have got a lot of work to do if they're going to make the grade. Here's one way of doing it. And here's another. But the prize for sheer lack of effort goes to this biker. Climbing over enormous boulders in homemade buggies can be a strange but rewarding activity. These drivers suffer the consequences when they attempt the impossible and learn that no stone goes unturned. This driver finds himself high and dry when his vehicle literally dies. Very embarrassing, but at least he's got a helper on hand to try and get him out of trouble. And after a lot of toing and throwing, for once, there's a happy ending. Co-driving a world rally car is an enormously tough task. But when your driver takes you over the jumps a little too fast, it can make for an eye-watering ride. Oh, ouch! But shouting out the pace notes in the wrong order can really damage the relationship. And sometimes the shame is too much to bear. Now, you'd think that if you were racing expensive Italian supercars, you'd be pretty wary of crashing. Not these guys, but then they don't have to fix them. This is MotoGP teammates Danny Pedrosa and Nicky Hayden on and off their bikes. Hayden was a whisper away from claiming his first title until that happened. Dear, oh dear, being taken out by your own teammate is infuriating. Here's the on-board view of their collision. The American really doesn't look in the best of moods there. You get the feeling that argument's going to run and run. You know, race drivers think differently from you and I. For a start, they think it's fun to drive at over 200 miles an hour with their backsides inches from the hot tarmac. It's no wonder that things sometimes go wrong, and when they do, the results are spectacular. High speed and a competitive streak can sometimes be a recipe for disaster. When you're travelling at speeds of well over 100 miles an hour, one little mistake can mean seriously big trouble. At these speeds, you're going out of the race in an instant. But whether it's your own fault or the guys who's just taken you out, the results are much the same. The only thing that's going to help you keep out of harm's way are the incredible safety standards of modern racing cars. Wow, that was a huge impact. He's very lucky to walk away from that one. Now, the white Porsche here looks like he's carrying way too much speed into that corner. 
clips the curb and he's launched into the air. Climbing out through the windscreen there, shaken and stirred, I suspect. And a huge flip there shoots the car up in the air. And that's a good landing, all things considered. When you get clipped by another car, just pray this isn't what happens next. He's flipping like a pancake. Here's another way to end your race in an instant. A nasty impact there. He'll be really glad he's protected by a massively strong roll cage. Rallycross drivers spend half their time on the tarmac and half their time on gravel. At least that's the idea. Check out the onboard view here to see just how quickly that happened. This is touring car ace James Thompson trying some rally. He's flying down that closed road section. Maybe a little too fast for his own good. Try explaining that to your team boss. These guys must be absolutely crazy. Surely there's an easier and safer way to get your thrills than that. Drag racing is always tricky, but in a mud bath it's even harder. But eventually he finds his way out. Cider is a motorcyclist's worst nightmare, but this guy's back on his feet in no time. Speedway is the place to practice big slides. This rider gives a master class in how it's done. There are some great comedy moments to be had watching people drive, and I'm not just talking about mothers trying to parallel park their 4 by 4s outside the local primary school. I'm talking about the professionals who'll get behind the wheel of virtually anything with an engine. And when they do, well, let the races begin. Well, so far, so good. From carbon fibre Formula One cars to gravel-munching, fire-spitting rally cars and lightweight, high-speed power bikes. But motorsport doesn't always have to involve cutting-edge technology and billion-pound budgets. Sometimes, all you need is a lawnmower and a muddy field. This is a 12-hour lawnmower race where the great British tradition of madcap eccentricity is alive and kicking. As dusk descends, the racers sprint across the start line in the best Le Mans tradition. And like the famous race, pitting for new tyres and a change of driver is all part of the fun. Some emergency repairs taking place there. 
it's a battle. 12 hours behind the wheel might not be so daunting when your top speed's only 15 miles an hour, but these guys demonstrate all the guts and determination you'd expect from top-level racing drivers. And as dawn breaks over the English countryside, the hardy racers have travelled tens of miles. And the winner is ready for a swig of cider and the applause of the crowd. That's absolutely fantastic stuff. Thank you so much, mate. If you've ever got fed up spending hours on the motorway stuck behind a slow-moving line of caravans on their way to the coast, the best way to get your anger out is with a carnage-filled bout of caravan racing. The start of the race here, and things looking pretty calm, but the demolition derby is about to begin. A big slide there, almost tips over, and that's wild driving on display. Plywood and half the kitchen sink flying across the track. He won't be driving that down the M1 in a hurry. London cabbies can usually be seen ferrying visitors around the capital streets, giving passengers the benefit of their wit and wisdom. When these venerable vehicles have reached the end of their road, they make one final journey on the racetrack. That's more traffic than you'll find on Oxford Street on a Saturday afternoon. Road holding might leave a little bit to be desired, but if you want to get from A to B in a hurry, hail one of these high octane cabbies. Now, here's something Del Boy would be proud of World Championship Robin Reliant Racing. Four wheels good, three wheels not so good, unless you like the look of broken fiberglass. But for sheer wackiness, nothing beats so-called Siamese racing. Take one car with an engine but no steering, and one car with steering but no engine, put one on top of the other, and hey presto, you've got yourself a sport, albeit one that's just a little bit top heavy. Extreme weather conditions can strike at any time and usually we can take refuge in the warmth and safety of our homes. But if you're competing in some of the world's toughest motorsports, there's no escaping the elements, whether it's snow, ice or mud. Have a look at this lot if you want to find out just how bad it can get. Driving on snow requires a deft touch on the accelerator and gentle steering inputs. Take a corner too fast and there's no way you'll be able to catch it. One thing's for sure, this is the way to skid row. Once you've started sliding, not much apart from a hedge is going to stop you, as this driver so deftly demonstrates. Even a 
gentle turn can prove impossible if you're going a bit too fast, but at least you can spin round quickly and head off in the right direction. Snowmobile riders have an advantage. With skids at the front and a caterpillar track underneath, they can gain traction in even the deepest snow. These guys and girls are absolutely tearing their way round this course, only millimetres away from each other. And coming up now are the jumps, where the riders try to gain time by soaring through the air for as long as possible. is an enormous leap there. But where you've really got to be careful is when you're pushed to the edge of the course. This guy's riding on the ragged edge and, oh, that was a terrible tumble he's taken there. Let's have another look at it. He loses the rear end and there's no way you can recover from a big moment like that. Mud, meanwhile, poses its own particular problems. When you come through a swamp like that, seeing anything out of your windscreen is out of the question. This bike race in America is more than a spectator sport. The only way a rider can make it through that is with a little help from his friends. Even a Land Rover will have trouble in getting through this. Wheels buried in mud so deep you'd think it'd never get out. But with determination and a rugged four-wheel drive system, they get out with most of their dignity intact. Some people, though, relish getting in their monster truck and getting dirty. With tyres that big, you'd get through anything. But when you've got to swap drivers halfway round, the real problem can be climbing out of the door without doing that. Fire is man's oldest foe, and when you're driving a rally car packed with high-octane racing fuel, it only takes one spark, and it's time to leave via the nearest exit. And if you're unable to see out of the windscreen for all the smoke, it's probably time to call it a day. Racing in the wet, meanwhile, is a challenge that only the best drivers can cope with. Braking distances are reduced, steering round the corners becomes a battle, and it's impossible to stop your hair frizzing. But it's the motorcycle riders who really suffer in the wet. With limited adhesion and powerful engines, you're in big trouble the moment things start going wrong. Now, that's one place you don't want to find yourself.
spinning out is bad enough, but when you're surrounded by a herd of fast-moving metal, it's even worse. Thunder and lightning can be very, very frightening if you're out in the open, especially if there's hailstones crashing down all around. This bunch of GT racers didn't stand a chance once the heavens opened. The US of A is the place to be if you want to see speed, death-defying tricks and really large people eating mountains of junk food out of a bucket. It's also the home of drag racing, which has attracted race fans and speed junkies for decades now. Heavily modified cars race side by side to set the fastest time over a quarter of a mile. The incredible skills of the drivers usually keep the cars in the right place. Notice I did say usually, because it doesn't always go quite to plan. Ear splitting noise, hot tarmac and highly volatile methanol fuel. This is the raw beating heart of American motorsport. the cars and they're tearing down the strip there. Naught to 200 miles per hour in under five seconds. Those are enormously impressive speeds they're reaching. A flame there, and he's lost the bodywork. The car continues with the driver battling to stay straight. That's a great escape. And seconds into this run, disaster strikes. There's fire, and he's totally out of control. Luckily, the flames are blown out by the force of the bodywork flying off the chassis. Over in the Nevada desert outside Las Vegas, drag racers have evolved into sand racers. But 2,000 horsepower and a loose, dusty surface requires lightning reactions. This racer only just managing to rein in the power and keep his car on a straight line. That could so easily have turned out very differently. For some, though, the real thrill is pulling the highest wheel stand. That's an enormous amount of power itching to tear the tyres to shreds. He's up and that's a very big wobble there. Can he hold it? It's all over the place, but he's just managed to hold it. Oh, a very lucky escape there. Another wheel stand demonstration here. Those enormous rear tyres provide a massive amount of grip. But if the car gets out of shape, this is the result. Let's take one more look at that. A 
swerve and he's flipped. A bone-shaking series of rolls. Things go wrong very quickly at those speeds and he'll be very glad for the strength of the roll cage. That is a huge moment. He'll have to remortgage the house to pay for all that damage. The rugged terrain of the American landscape has been seducing petrol heads for over a hundred years now. These ingenious machines can climb seemingly insurmountable boulders with a combination of huge tyres and rumbling V8 engines. But not every obstacle can be overcome. These attempts were definitely a step too far. But it's not just cars that Americans like pushing to the limit. Fitting a speedboat with a jet engine guarantees it's going to fly. Bumping and weaving across the water at nearly 200 miles an hour, it only takes a tiny amount of air getting under the front of the boat to launch it high into the air. Here on the slow-mo, you can see just how quickly the nose lifts. And before you know it, you're on the line to air traffic control. That is an unbelievable crash. Well, there you go, that's how the professionals do it. And although I've loved every minute of every race I've seen, it's never changed how carefully I drive. I always remember mirror, signal, maneuver, and safely pull away. Take care on the roads, goodbye.